Thank you.
How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Blue Collar Fly Fishing Variety Show. My name is Dustin Scott. I'm the creator of Heartwood Trade here in Austin, Texas. I have a couple of buddies of mine. Uh, I'll be pushing the buttons, so I'll be looking around left and right screen and uh, switching things around here. So I'd like to introduce you to a couple of my friends, Davin Topol and Aaron Reed. Happen out there. <laughs> Hey guys, <clears throat> thanks for uh, thanks for stopping in today. Yeah, we're excited. Um, we were kind of kidding because it, it we're we're here to celebrate the the Central Texas fly fishing community, but also Aaron Reed because his book signing in early May was canceled due to the COVID, and we were supposed to have a real big party. And Davin and I got together and said, "Hey man, why don't we do a virtual book signing? I thought that'd be kind of cool." And he said, yeah, that would be awesome. And then we approached Aaron about it, and he said, well, why don't we make it a celebration of the fly fishing community? So today we have quite a diverse group of folks that make up a small percentage of our fly fishing community here in Central Texas. And you'll hear from artists, you'll hear from designers, you'll hear from just your regular old fly fishers, conservationists, all sorts of folks. So it's going to be a good time. And, uh, you know, it took Aaron only 45 months to write this 300, play, uh, 300 page book. And he timed it perfectly with the release of 2020 because it's just been a, a fantastic year so far. Isn't that right, Aaron? <clears throat> it looks like Aaron's microphone's a little messed up. Okay. Uh, yeah. This also. There you are, buddy. I can hear you. Yeah, something like that. I, I don't know that it was quite 45 months. I think we're still in that 45 month period, but uh, it's been a slog. And with that much advance notice, you would think that I could have timed it better. But, uh, you know, I mean, this is not uh, this is not something that just we're going through. Obviously, everyone in the country, anyone who uh, tried to uh, publish a book in the last uh, three months uh, or probably this month, too, is up against the same thing. So. Uh, I'm really grateful uh, to you guys uh, for putting this together, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the show. That's right. <clears throat> you know, the news has been pretty heavy lately with uh, the COVID and, um, you know, the job loss and everything is happening with uh, the inequality and the, and the justice and stuff like that. So we would be remiss if we didn't say that, you know, that's definitely in our minds, and uh, we hope you can have a little bit of break for the next 60 to 90 minutes or so watching us goofballs talk about fly fishing and, uh, you know, checking in with our friends um, throughout the program as well. Davin, you want to introduce yourself? I didn't really do a good job of that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, guys. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'm Davin Topol. I am the, uh, the guy behind Whiskey River Chronicle and uh, head distiller over at Real Spirits Distilling Company uh, and uh, also a... Uh, fly fishing guide for Spoke Hollow Outfitters in Wimberley. Um, and yeah, I mean, um, when Dustin and I started talking about, you know, about what was supposed to transpire with the book signing and everything, we, again, just kind of felt like we needed to do something, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, with, again, with Aaron's timing with everything, uh, we thought, why not make a, yeah, a virtual book signing celebrating Aaron's book um, and, you know, all the hard effort that he put into this. Um, it would be such a shame for it not to go, not to have something um, and, you know, just let Aaron know and get a collection of people that will let Aaron know what this book means to them, what this community really means to them in the, uh, the Central Texas fly fishing community. Um, we, uh, we're very appreciative of Aaron's book and all of his hard work that he put into this. And again, back to timing, I don't think it could have happened at a better time. This, is, this book really outlines the do it yourself fly fishing. Um, we're unable to get you guys out there on the water as a guy, um, as much as we would like to. And Aaron's book even though we were unable to get together in person, I still think it's, it's timing was, it's almost perfect. Um, this allows you, uh, the reader to get out there, pick up a, a, a fly rod, uh, go pick up some flies and go enjoy nature with, uh, yourself or a few of your buddies, 
um, keeping distance, of course, but um, it's, it's really uh, just one of the best resources that uh, we could have in times like this. So thanks, Aaron. And uh, yeah. Looking you're going to make me get show. something. You're going to make me get something in my eye right here uh, at the very beginning <laughs> of this. Um, but uh, I, I do think it's I, I do think it's appropriate we celebrate the community because uh, the community uh, here in Central Texas made this book possible, and we're going to hear a lot about that today, I think, and from a lot of different people. And uh, but I couldn't have done it uh, without uh, the help of my friends, and um, many of those friends I've I've met through fly fishing, or uh, and many of them even through writing this book. So. Uh, definitely a net plus for me and um, just really glad everyone's here. Yeah, so this is an interactive event. Um, if you click through on Facebook or if you click through to watch it on YouTube from the website, um, there's a chat function on there so we can see that you're chatting. We see Edgar in there, we see Chris, we see Mark just joined us who is the, the publisher of Aaron's book. And um, you know what, why don't we just hear from Mark right now? What do you say, guys? Yeah. Hello, Hello, I'm Mark Sidenquist speaking to you from Las Vegas, Nevada, where I am the publisher of the local angler Fly Fishing Austin in Central Texas. It is such a pleasure to participate in the Blue Collar Fly Fishing Variety Show, a wonderful example of the creativity and ingenuity inspired by the unexpected circumstances in which we all found ourselves a couple months ago. First of all, my thanks to Aaron Reed for the diligence and knowledge he combined to create the masterful book about fly fishing. Thanks to Carrie, Patrick, Connor, and Aiden for their patience and support while Aaron was out slogging his way through streams and creeks for the 45 months it took to create the wonderful resource this book turned out to be. Aaron's extended family and friends also supported him over the time this book was being written. In the audience tonight are friends, colleagues, and family members from at least eight states. I have been looking forward to meeting all of those who had made plans to travel to Austin for the book launch party in Georgetown that was planned for early May. A virtual greeting to all of you. I hope we'll get to the chance to meet in person someday. Special thanks to Davin and Dustin for hosting this event and to the entire Central Texas fly fishing community for your continued interest and enthusiasm. Fly Fishing Austin is the first fly fishing guidebook in the local angler series. Each future local angler book will feature dozens of wades, paddles, and floats described by expert anglers who share their secrets and tips about their home waters. The coronavirus epidemic is limiting our actions in many ways these days. But fly fishing and social distancing, fortunately, do not need to be mutually exclusive. Hooray for that! I am thrilled to be part of this event. My thanks to all who are joining us tonight for the launch of the Blue Collar Fly Fishing Variety Show. We're doing these face cams. I forgot to turn the mics back on. How's it going? <laughs> we just heard from Mark. Aaron was just saying that uh, that he's known Mark for 15 years and used to do some work with him, and uh, it was it was good that y'all got back together to create this thing. <clears throat> yeah, my wife also just ducked in and said no sound. So yeah, are we good now? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, right. It might happen a couple more times, guys. This is our first pancake, so. Uh, this is just this is kind of like one of our fishing trips, isn't it? Exactly. Well, this, There's going to be this will go some, better than one of our 
fishing trips, to be honest with you. <laughs> Who left the whiskey behind? No, uh, anyway, I just wanted to say, uh, if you weren't reading my lips, that uh, – uh, I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity to write the book. I'm I'm super grateful for the uh, support that uh, Mark, uh, Megan, and everyone at Emberfex Books has uh, given the title. Um, I cannot imagine having done this on my own. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people are very successful self-publishing these days, and uh, I'm glad I didn't have to do that. And uh, just really grateful for the uh, for the support. Well, our next guest, we're going to start with a, a couple expat Texans. And the uh, first is a guy named Jeff Troutman, who is the creator and uh, producer of Remote No Pressure, which is a fly fishing podcast. Really cool dude. Uh, he's also a musician, so he's going to he's gonna say a couple words here. Hey, hey Henry, it's Jeff Troutman. I'm very excited to be here. I was very honored to be uh, asked by Davin and the crew to to do a little tribute. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to do the um, the book release party because of the COVID-19 crisis and all that. So that was very unfortunate, but it's great to be here. I'm very honored that you chose uh, Remote No Pressure as the name of a fishing hole. And one of the lines from your book, uh, Fly Fishing Austin in Central Texas, one of the, one of the things that uh, I love about the book is that it's actually a very well written book. It's not just a book about cool fishing holes or traveling, but it's like really well written. And one of the lines that you wrote is, "It's that kind of lonesome around here or out here about remote no pressure." And that was very cool. And you also uh, talked about a couple of my songs, and it was just such an honor to see um, see my name as as part of of what you're doing uh, because I really believe in what you're doing with a book with Texas stream coalitions and all the, with a Texas stream coalition and all that you're doing. I, I really believe in that Aaron. And I just, I just, from the bottom of my heart, uh, you've been so encouraging and you've believed in me as a songwriter and as a musician and from the bottom of my heart, I can't, um, express enough gratitude. So I'll play a couple of the songs. Um, one of the songs that, that was off of, uh, that you mentioned in the book was called six street Dan. Um, so I'll play that. Fly fishing at the 6th Street Dam My dad taught me how to stand and Made me the man I am And who I ought to be Taught me how to tie my flies Told me never compromise and Made me the man I am Never who I ought to be Said do the best you can Lend a helping hand Love the ones you want to hate the most You're gonna win and lose a lot, boy So just give it all you got This life's a river That's running high And running free My grandpa fishes Croton Pond I'd always try to tag along He never seemed to mind or care Maybe who I ought to be Taught me how to roll my cast When to care, when to let things pass Made me the man I am who I ought to be Said do the best you can Lend a helping hand Love the ones you want to hate the most You're gonna win and lose a lot, boy So just give it all you got This life's a river That's running wide Now my boys like to fish with me We fish the same old waters Lakes and streams I often hear my grandpa whispering to me Saying to me Do the best you can Lend a helping hand Love the ones you wanna hate the most You're 
You're gonna win and lose a lot, boy So just give it all you got This life's a river It's running wild And running deep But, you know, Wait, and uh, I messed up the audio again. That's the last time. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I'll put, you, I'll put you on the fish next yeah. time we go out, too. <laughs> yeah. Somebody said in the quote, it's not a fishing trip until Aaron falls. So could you just fall down for us, Aaron, real quick? I'd appreciate <laughs> <it>. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there it is. Now we're on. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Now, yeah. now we're fishing. <laughs> Uh, usually the rule is you can't start new music until somebody catches the first fish. So we'll just count that as a, as a good flop there. And uh, what I was saying was thanks, Jeff, for the song. We'll, we'll hear from him a little bit later. Uh, he's sang two songs for us, and so that'll come up a little bit later in, this, in the show. And Davin had something to say about this particular song that stuck out to him. Yeah, we were, you know, listening to the the – the clip, you know, and uh, there's a line that really stuck out to me as we were kind of discussing um, this song. And, you know, the, the line is simply do the best you can lend a helping hand uh, and love the ones you want to hate the most. And I think that really resonated uh, for me and us in general, just because of the times that we're in. Um, I really think that that song was, you know, it was really well written and it couldn't, again, couldn't have been timed better with um, with what is going on. Um, I think that um, you know, love breeds love, hate breeds hate. And even though you may not agree with everybody or everything, I think everybody needs to keep an open ear and um, and you know, talk talk a little bit more. Um, get 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 to know your neighbor. Get to know your you know your get to know your quote unquote enemy, uh, who you think, uh, is your enemy because lo and behold, you're really going to find that, um, love is much better than hate and you're going to live a better life. And, you know, Jeff just, I mean, he nailed it with that song. Personally, I think it was, it was spot on for the times. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, Jeff will be down here in a couple of weeks and I think we're all going to yeah. see him. Um, it'll be the uh, single greatest concentration of remote no pressure guests in history. Um, I, I think Wild Bill's going to be the designated survivor back in Michigan. Um, so we've all been on the show, right? I'm, oh wait. Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, it was not, wonderful being on the show, and we've not, all been on the show. Not, uh, yeah, not, maybe not, not me. They're 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 ribbing not, me because yesterday not, they, they were saying everybody's been on the show, and I said no, and that's 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 mostly my fault. <laughs> And another thing that everybody has that I don't have is, is the Chris Barclay fiberglass fly rod, which I'm in the works on mm -hmm. doing. And uh, that's our next expat that is, is he's over there in Winston-Salem. And, uh, and he's coming up next with his buddy, Dave Faison. Um, Aaron knows them really well. They went on a wild road trip, which they'll talk about a little bit. But you want to say anything about Chris or Dave, Aaron? You know, I've got family members watching, so I probably can't say what I know. I'm kidding. Um, no, they're just two really great guys. And, um, you know, honestly, even though they live halfway across the country, um, uh, two of my uh, really close friends and um, can't wait to see them uh, in a couple of weeks as well. And, uh, you know, uh, Chris's mom uh, lives right here in Round Rock. And uh, his sister lives uh, lives here in the area, so he's down here uh, fairly often, and and fishes our home waters quite a bit too when he's in town. So, anyway, let's let's hear what they have to say. Right, let's go. Hi, I'm Chris Barkley. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm Dave, Dave Faison. Um, Aaron, Aaron Reed was introduced to me through Chris. I'm uh, Chris's personal documentary guy, photographer, editor, all that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, we were 
linked up together through a trip in the Southwest for Gila Trout, Rio Grande, and Apache, and ended up being an incredible trip. Um, it was one of those trips I'll, I don't think I'll ever forget about. And during this process, um, Aaron kept on talking about this book that I thought was actually fake because he seemed to be never working on it. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one time back in the uh, summer two years ago where I stopped into Aaron's house after fishing with a good friend um, when I was visiting Texas and we started talking about doing this trip, the Southwest Native Trout Trip, fishing for Gila Trout, uh, Rio Grande Cutthroat, and uh, Apache Trout. And uh, we started talking about it and I said, hey, you mind if I uh, talk to David about this and see if he wants to come and help photograph and fish and enjoy it. And he was like, yeah. Aaron said, yeah, sure, why not? Um, so and of course I said yes. So that, I think when I was on my way back, I texted Dave and said, hey, I got a trip for us. And um, it, it was a dream trip that I did not know if it was going to be real or not. It was um, just sounded too good to be true. But when the plans really started happening, it, uh, it really started building momentum and yeah. got uh, to be crazy fun with, with Aaron and Jess and, and Dave. And uh, when, we're, when we landed in Austin, I remember Aaron handing me a beer at the airport and said, here you go. This yep. Is, this is the way we're starting. So that was good. That was a good start. Cooler full of beer. Yeah, cooler full of beer hanging off yep. the back of his Jeep that had just been cleaned. But still dirty. Still dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we ended up uh, going from there and um, it was really cool to be able to see Central Texas and Austin and what the fishery had to offer because before the trip even started, we went to Brushy Creek and a couple other ones and um, landed my first Guadalupe bass, which was really cool. Um, Aaron was able to explain all the scientific nerdy stuff that was over my head, but really neat to learn. Yeah. Um, Aaron's got all the facts about everything just dialed in. It's great to talk to him about all those details. Yeah. And uh, a fun thing about the, the Southwest trip is I'll, I'll never look at Fritos, bean dip, um, Dr. Pepper and Twizzlers the same way. Just ask Aaron about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a mix. But really proud of Aaron with the book. Yeah. It looks amazing. Everything about it, uh, the photography, the writing, um, really just being able to highlight how cool Austin and Central Texas is. Um, it's very unique and different from what, what I'm used to in North Carolina. Yeah, great book. Really, it's a, it's a key piece to being able to enjoy fishing. I think in Central Texas, it'll uh, tell you everything you need to know and and more, and tell you what music to listen to and what beer to drink and all kinds of great things. Well, cool. So, thanks, Aaron. Good job, Aaron. Thank you. A couple good dudes right there. Couple of the best dudes, yeah. That was, um, man, that was a heck of a road trip. That was a lot of fun. It's one of those things where you start out and and uh, you don't know the other guys so well, but you know by the end of the trip you're going to be best friends or you're going to hate each other. And uh, fortunately for all of us, uh, it went the first way. Uh, and I think my buddy Jess, uh, who was on that trip with us, maybe tuned in right now too from from the tugboat down in Corpus. So hey, Jess. Are you, are you still on a healthy diet of Rios, Twizzlers, and Dr. Twizzlers Pepper? Twizzlers and Dr. Pepper? <laughs> all, the, all the time. <laughs> well, Sustenance, that's, that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, saw, I saw someone, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Felder, uh, commented that Chris makes some beautiful fly rods. And um, boy, isn't that the truth? I think we all have uh, Chris Barclay fly rods, right? No, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, it, no. Except for well, Dad yeah. doesn't know how to take care of his. That's what I've heard. And uh, <laughs> Chris and I are working on something pretty cool that uh, it'll it'll happen in the next six months, I imagine. Uh, he's waiting on me, so that's my fault. <clears throat> right on. <laughs> but um, as you know, we have a pretty big giveaway coming up. It's going to happen at the end of the show. 
But one thing that is maybe a surprise is we're giving away five whole books. They're actually all 300 plus pages. Um, and we're giving away four that are signed, and the fifth book that is signed at the end is going to go with the full package. So we're actually up for our first book giveaway. So if you're into superstitions, cross your fingers. And uh, I'll let Aaron tell you what's up, because he's going to actually sign it live here. You want me to announce who won? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just got a text from Dustin telling me that uh, Dana Williams, who is the president of Texas Women Fly Fishers, uh, won the first book. So um, I'm actually going to have to look at her sign up and see who she wanted to inscribe to because I know she has a copy. And uh, I had the pleasure of being uh, on my first virtual event. Uh, as uh, I think it was a WebEx uh, presentation with members of Texas Women's uh, Fly Fishers and I've seen several pop up in the comments here Adrian and um, maybe a few others and uh, she, anyway she it was a lot she of wanted fun. It filled out to her that's what she, like that text is who she wanted to assign to so I don't, did you sign one already for her oh you know what I probably didn't I yeah, think maybe she so just picked, picked I, one up at the store there you yeah. go all right well Dana I'll uh here's your book Here's the pen, and I'm going to sign it right now. Congratulations, Dana. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe draw a picture in there while you're at it. I, I'm not going to draw a picture, but I'll I'll, I'll throw in a, a, a sticker. That's How's that sound? Too. Yeah. That's awesome. So one of the things that we wanted to do was uh, show off Davin's skills of making drinks. And um, you want to talk about the drink that you made, Davin? Yeah, sure. So what we put together today for you guys, you guys, anybody can make this at home. It was a fairly simple drink. Uh, I added a little bit, uh, uh, I, I upscaled it a little bit with a few extra ingredients. But uh, what I put together for you is a Luchenbach lemonade. Uh, and this is a spinoff of a drink I used to make uh, when I was a bartender way back in the day uh, called the Lynchburg lemonade. And the Lynchburg lemonade is typically made with Tennessee whiskey and lemonade, just real simple. So uh, my version of the Luchenbach lemonade is going to be with uh, margarita mix instead of lemonade. And so obviously I'm going to be using some real spirits uh, whiskey with that. Uh, but it really kind of gives a Texas flair uh, on, this, uh, on this Tennessee cocktail. Um, but uh, with that, let's, uh, let's see how I made it. I want to say thanks to my neighbor, Paul, for letting us use his awesome bar. And uh, Yeah, thanks, Paul. I think we'll be over there a little bit later, maybe. I mean, if you want to know why my cheeks are a little rosy, it's because I had a couple of sips <laughs> of this thing. And it's a, it's a massive drink. It's, it's just size-wise. So let's, let's check it out. All right. So this is how we're going to make the Luchenbach lemonade. This is uh, my version of the... Uh, Lynchburg lemonade in Tennessee, but obviously we're in Texas, so we're going to use all Texas ingredients. Uh, to start off, we're going to use a mason jar and build a drink in our actual uh, drink glass itself. So we're going to build that with, fill that with ice. About three quarters of the way. And we are going to be going with uh, the rye grain straight malt whiskey. Uh, I'm choosing this one because it has a little bit of a spicy grain brought on by that rye. Uh, we use a malted rye in this grain whiskey and it just brings out some uh, really neat grass notes, um, some spicy flavor, and just adds a lot of unique characteristic to this cocktail. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two ounces of the rye grain. malt whiskey another texas product we're actually going to be using uh, paula's orange liqueur out of austin texas we're going to add an ounce of paula's and then my version the texas version of the lynchburg lemonade uh, is going to be a margarita it's a whiskey margarita and so we're gonna instead of lemonade like they use in uh, for the lynchburg lemonade i'm going to be using a, a margarita mix 
Uh, this is another new, uh, this is new to me, but it's fantastic product uh, out of uh, Texas as well, Carter's uh, Margarita Mix. And so we're going to have a pain in the butt opening this, but we are going to simply top the drink off almost all the way up. Uh, probably uh, you're looking at about, this is a large drink, so uh, we're probably gonna go about four ounces of margarita mix. I'm gonna add some fresh lemon juice to this since it is a lemonade. I'm also going to add a little bit of flair with some preserved lemon. Uh, you can make this at home. It's simple ingredients. It's just lemon and salt. I've also added a little bit of uh, uh, grains of paradise and bay leaves in there. And when it's done fermenting and, and being preserved, you can see that it just falls apart and it adds just kind of a salty flavor to that cocktail. Again, you know, those margaritas are really uh, complemented with salt. And so that lemon adds that lemon along with the salt. And we're going to simply put the lid right on it. Give it a shake. Until it gets nice and mixed up. And then we're going to step it up another notch. I typically like to make my margaritas with a little bit of sparkle. Uh, so I'll usually use like a soda water or, um, or beer. In this case, we're gonna use another Texas product. This is the El Guapo, which is Real Ales Mysterium Verum uh, Barrel-Aged Goza. Um, this is available at Real Ale Brewing Company, but this is gonna add a little bit of sparkling uh, to the cocktail, as well as that barrel-aged characteristic, which complements the whiskey and the uh, lime goza. That sour goza really, you know, just adds to that adds to the uh, margarita. So just top that off. We'll top it off with the lemon. And that's the Luchenbach lemonade. Cheers. Yeah, so that's uh, the Luchenbach Lemonade. Uh, it's one of my favorite summer drinks. It's uh, really simple if you know how to make a margarita uh, and you can step it up with uh, any small amounts of flair that you want. You know, obviously I use some uh, preserved lemon uh, and uh, some of uh, some of Real Ale's special Mysterium Verum beer in there. But uh, it's, it's something that uh, is just ever evolving and always changes. And again, it's just perfect for the hot summer days that we have here in Texas after fishing uh, and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, speaking of, uh, you know, fly fishing and cocktails, our next guest that we have coming up is uh, Matt Bennett of Fly Geek Matt's uh, Flies. And uh, Matt's been, uh, he's been a big supporter of Real Ale and Real Spirits. <laughs> uh, we, we, we may or may not have made several trades, uh, flies <laughs> for whiskey uh, throughout the years of knowing each other. Uh, but he's a, he's a great guy, great fly tire. Uh, and I mean, I, I don't know where I'd be without some of his flies. They've, uh, they've really saved the day for me on, on these rivers out here. Uh, and they actually made it into the book a few times, right there, Aaron? Yeah, uh, and uh, you're going to hear Matt uh, mention something about uh, hand modeling. I think he's a little, um, I think he's a little ticked off. I didn't give him like a caption on that or something. I will in the uh, second uh, in the uh, second printing if Mark's good with that. But um, yeah, I mean Matt's flies are my go-to's uh, all the time. They're you know the flies I put in the book um, really are the flies I use all the time, and uh, uh, you know between Matt and um, uh, Chris Johnson and a few other people here in town. Um, I, they've got it covered for our waters. Yeah, I heard Matt was so upset about the hand modeling deals. He, he actually went out and bought handsomehands.com. So if the uh, fly tying doesn't go very well, he's just going to completely transition over to that. <laughs> right on. <laughs> well, without further ado, here is Matt Bennett of Fly Geek Custom Flies, which he has 24 flies and a month subscription in part of our package. 
Hey guys, hey guys, my name, my name is, Matt is Bennett. Bennett. I'm the guy behind the vise at Fly Geek Custom Flies. Davin, Dustin, and Aaron asked me to put together a short video just talking about what fly fishing in Central Texas means to me. So, first off, Aaron, congrats on the book. I'm a huge fan. It's probably my favorite fly fishing book ever at this point. I might be a little bit biased since I have some flies in there. Uh, I do a little hand modeling in there too. So, um, you know, what I really appreciate about it is not just the information about the flies and where to fish and stuff like that, but the time you took to talk about the folklore and the history and, you know, where to grab a burger, or where to grab a beer, you know, that stuff's important to me. So thanks for taking the extra time to put stuff in there like that. And I really look forward to seeing what comes next. Um, you know, when I think about the fly fishing scene in Central Texas, what comes to mind first for me is a community. You know, I got into fly fishing again when I moved to Texas over 10 years ago um, just by finding Chris Johnson's first shop, Living Waters Fly Fishing, off of Sandbass Road, kind of right off the banks of Brushy Creek. And I kind of, I remember walking in and meeting Chris and uh, picking up my first fly rod since I moved to Texas. I think it was a TFO finesse and a four weight, maybe a three weight. Anyway, it was a great rod for fishing uh, Brushy Creek and places like that. And you know, I, Chris kind of adopted me into his shop family. Um, you know, most of you know that I worked there for a while, um, which kind of led me to commercial tying full time, which is what I do now. And I've done that for over five years. So, you know, just the incredible support from the community has allowed me to kind of do what I love and tie flies for you guys. And, you know, while I don't get to fish as often as I like, perhaps I get to kind of live vicariously through you guys and see all the pictures of the fish you catch and the flies that I tie for you and, you know, kind of hear your stories. And, you know, the other thing is I, I met some of my best friends since moving to Austin in the fly fishing world. You know, we have such an incredible array of uh, craftsmen and guides and, you know, people doing, you know, brewing and distilling and uh, woodworking and, uh, you know, making uh, cuffs and jewelry and uh, graphic design. And there's all these people have had a, um, a big influence on me, um, just helping me grow my business and, and uh, being in the fly fishing scene. So, you know, I, that's, that's the big part of it for me is just the community. Um, you know, if you're not part of a of a fly fishing club or you don't have a group of friends that kind of meets regularly, um, you know, I would encourage you to find a, find a community, a little slice of that of your own. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of fly fishing international clubs here in the area. You know, if you're into the trout thing, we have the biggest, uh, chapter of, uh, Trout Unlimited in the country down on the Guadalupe. Um, and there's, there's plenty of other opportunities. There's lots of fly tying nights that happen. Um, lots of, uh, you know, we, I host one at the Oscar Blues Brewery once a month. So, you know, really encourage you to kind of get a part, get a jump on that and be a part of that community. Um, you know, really look forward to the point where we can all get together again and uh, have a have a big party to kind of launch the book. So we just want to say cheers, Aaron. Congrats on the book launch and look forward to seeing what's next. Thanks. So, you know, really encourage you to cheers, Matt. Matt's one of the most stand up legit nicest guys out there he's actually extremely funny um as as good as he ties flies he can also tie up a a trout rig with a, a nymph trout rig pretty well as well but as as well as he casts that is as well as i can row my little boat uh we played whirly bird down to the guadalupe once <laughs> and we finally made it to the side and decided just to have a little break and maybe have a beer or two so and he does have handsome hands, doesn't he? <laughs> Matt's just a good guy. He, he mentioned uh, Living Waters Fly Fishing. Uh, he actually worked there for a little bit. And um, Chris Johnson is, is coming up next. Um, he Talk about community, man. Uh, Living Waters up in Round Rock, Texas. This guy gives back. Um, I'll let Aaron talk about his, the... The fly tying night and then the, the various um, schools and classes that he has on Saturdays. Um, but he's, I'm proud to call him a friend. And, uh, yeah, I'll let Aaron talk a little bit more about Chris. I mean, so this is, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a lot of 
great fly shops around uh, the Austin area, north, south, central, um, down along the Guadalupe River uh, on the tailwater. Uh, but Living Waters is my local fly shop. It's the one that's two exits dangerously, two exits down the road from me. And um, Chris, Melody, uh, Jeff, Jim, Jessica, Josh, a lot of J's down there. Um, uh, uh, Marcus, uh, Griff. I mean, what a great, just a fantastic group of people. Um, welcoming to everyone who walks through that door. And as you said, Dustin, they do so much for the community and so much free stuff, you know, um, the, the Saturday seminars that they do in the shop or, or lately virtually. Um, today's was on uh, fly fishing uh, uh, Southern Colorado and, you know, a place I like to go and a bunch of us like, I know you've been up there too to, to, to chase uh, Rio Grande Cutthroat. And um, I mean, Chris is giving away spots and he's telling you just exactly what you need to do. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the once a month uh, Saturday intro to fly fishing class, I think is possibly the best deal going on fly fishing. Uh, four hours of casting instructing, uh, cast casting instruction and uh, what to throw and where to go and what kind of fish you're going to see and uh, free round rock donuts and coffee on top of it. So uh, really appreciate everything they do. And you can snag Aaron's book there too, if you'd like. Oh yeah. I think they've got him in stock right now. <laughs> All right, man. Let's hear from Chris. Hey y'all, this is Chris Johnson at Living Waters Fly Fishing. Just wanted to take a little bit to share uh, some of my thoughts about fly fishing community, especially as it pertains to Central Texas. Uh, community is one of the pillars of our store here at Living Waters. Uh, one of the three pillars is community, the other two are conservation and education, that we really kind of make sure that the store and, and what we do revolve around those things, uh, and especially as it revolves around community specifically. Um, and so within the community, the thing that I love the most is that it is diverse. It's mothers and sons, it's fathers and daughters, it's entire families, it's old and young, uh, you know, it's men, women, children, it doesn't matter. Like, the, the fly fishing is for everyone, and I think that's one of the things I enjoy about this sport the most is that anyone can do it, and it's accessible to so many. And uh, as a husband, as a father, uh, I love seeing my wife and kids on the water with me, uh, and I love getting to take them places and do stuff with them. So to see the family push within fly fishing has been spectacular and something that we've really seen an uptick in uh, here at the shop. It's been something really fun to watch. Uh, so community, whether it's biological family or not, if you're part of the fly fishing community, that does make you family. Uh, and it makes you part of this store family, makes you part of this family of fly fishing a a as a whole. And that's something that we really, really cherish uh, as a shop and uh, it is really some a place that serves that community. Uh, within that also is the education element. When I started fly fishing, I started in elementary school. I didn't know anybody who fly fished. I was the first fly angler in my family, didn't have anybody to teach me. So I checked out a lot of books from the local library, rented a lot of movies, and uh, that was there was no YouTube, so that, that was not a thing. And uh, so learning was tough. And so, I mean, now in this day and age where you can Google anything and YouTube anything, you know, that, that's made that easier, but there's still that physical element of learning from somebody and getting to have a personal relationship with your teacher or teachers. And that's why events here in Central Texas, like, you know, we've got Oktoberfish, we have Trout Fest, we have Flies and Flames, we have many, many others throughout the state that are just, I mean, they're so important. I cannot stress the importance of those events because you get to meet those people that have gone before you and have kind of towed the line for this sport and this community and learning from them hands-on and learning about what they value and, and the things that they teach best. That's something that's so special and something that as a shop we make sure that we uh, that we give back to the community through education however we can. And that's something that our community at large, you know, different guides and other shops as well, that they do such a great job of here in Central Texas and we, and we really appreciate that. And lastly, the conservation element within community is so important. And that's the part that I think is very, very near and dear to my heart is to give back to the places that have given us so much. And I mean, why wouldn't we want to take care of it? it it's, it's our recreation. It's our hobby. It's what we daydream about when we're in the office. Uh, I mean, I'm, in a, I'm surrounded by fly tying stuff right now, but then everywhere around me is fish pictures. So I mean, I'm going to daydream about it even if I'm tying flies. So that's the part that I think is so important is to give back and to cherish that which you know has given us so much and has really it's what this community centers around 
So conservation is another thing that through community becomes so important. And uh, all of that in some capacity, the education, the, the story of the community, and the conservation, um, you know, all of it is all wrapped up in some degree in Aaron's new book. And that's, I was going to say a few words about this, and that is, this is a fantastic resource for anybody fishing the Central Texas Hill Country, the greater Austin area. And he mentions conservation. He talks about fish species. He talks about general knowledge, where to go, what to do. I mean, he drew an X on a map for you. And so, Aaron, thank you so much for authoring something and putting something together that I know cost you blood, sweat, and tears. And this is something that Central Texas has needed for a very long time. And so thank you for taking the time and giving back to our community with such a precious gift of this book. And so thank you. And for those that have not read it, get your hands on a copy. And uh, I think you'll be very, very impressed. So thank you to our community for supporting our store, uh, for supporting this sport, and supporting the places that we really, really value, like our creeks and streams and lakes. So thank you all so much. And uh, man, we look forward to seeing you on the water. Thank you all. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> I mean, it's fly tying nights on Wednesday. I have like 60 people, 50 and 60 people. All the supplies are provided. You don't have to pay for anything. They have vices there for everybody. And plus, you can actually get there early and go have a barbecue dinner with everybody and, and chit chat and have a good time. So quite, which, the, quite an awesome place. Which Chris pays for. So, um, wild no not it's really amazing yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you talked about your book what do you say we give away the second book yeah let's give it let's give away another one who's the uh who's the lucky victim this time <laughs> it's it's austin hoff won the book okay and he'd like it made out to rusty to rusty all right cheers austin right on congratulations yeah, thanks a lot while you're signing it, uh, Davin, Holly Mack wanted to know if she can order the whiskey or they have to go down there and buy it. You, you can order the whiskey. It is, uh, you can order it online, uh, which is very new uh, in the state of Texas. But uh, because of these times, you're actually able to go to realalebrewing.com and, um, or uh, go directly to realalebrewing.square.com dot net uh something like that if you go to realalebrewing.com it'll uh bring you over to an ordering website that you can pre-order uh and then uh it is for pickup only and those are happening on wednesdays thursdays fridays and saturdays are pickups so you can order anytime uh and it'll give you the first available pickup uh date and time uh but typically if you order on Tuesday or Monday, you know, uh, you'll be able to pick up on Wednesday. And it's going to be the best way to get our spirits, especially um, some of the harder to get things that aren't in the liquor stores, like the uh, rye grain, uh, single malt whiskey, um, the uh, double barrel. We actually still have double barrel five available. Uh, usually we sell out of those pretty quick, but because we haven't been able to have people over to the tap room, uh, those we still have some in stock. And um, in my opinion, it's probably one of the best ones that we put out. Um, the We have a single barrel available, uh, as well as our flagship signature whiskey and gin. So uh, yeah, go to Real Ale Brewing's uh, website and um, you can order beer as well. Uh, again, you can get things that uh, you're not going to be able to get at the grocery store. Many of our beers are at the grocery store, but um, the Mysterium Virum line that I use for the cocktail, those aren't going to be everywhere. Those are kind of specialty items. And uh, the only way that you can get a lot of these uh, or some of these are through ordering through our website. So it's, it's pickup you know, only. Yeah. It's pickup only. It is. Yeah. It is pickup only. It is pickup only. Um, but I mean, it gives you a great reason to. You know what? What I would do is grab Aaron's book, grab a rod, head out towards Blanco. There are several. Um, you know, you can map it out in Aaron's book. I don't know how many different access points. Yeah, you have lot. the Pedmalis River. You've got the Blanco River. You've got Onion Creek. You know, whichever direction that you're coming from, you have a lot of different spots that you can actually fish on your way out to pick up your, uh, 
your your specialty alcohol and beer from us. So uh, it's a beautiful drive. It's only about 45 minutes away from uh, Austin, uh, 50 minutes from uh, from San Antonio. But yeah, it's a gorgeous drive. So do yourself a favor, grab a book, grab a rod, go get yourself some whiskey. You know, I went down um, just the other day, uh, Davin, and I placed the order before I left Georgetown to pick up a couple of bottles, including that bottle of uh, of your um, uh, rye uh, straight malt whiskey uh, that's in the picture right now. <clears throat> and um, it was super easy. I mean, there were two cars ahead of me when I got there. I placed the order before I left Georgetown, mm -hmm. got to Blanco. Uh, and uh, texted them when I got there that I had, you know, people coming, you know, people who are usually in the tasting room or, or, or working there uh, came out and they were in masks and, you know, they said, hey, you know, what, what, what was your order? And they brought it right down and sat it in the uh, uh, passenger side for me. And um, it was just super easy. And it, and it felt nice to be able to do something because I know um, a lot, like a lot of small businesses, uh, the, the craft distilleries and breweries uh, in the area, are suffering because they can't have people in like they used to. So um, I did have a quick question for you on this Lukenbach uh, or Lukenbach lemonade. Um, does it make a difference if you make it with uh, the rye or the double barrel, which is my favorite expression you've done so far or the signature? Is it, I mean, all good? Yeah, it's all good. I mean, I don't try to pretend to tell people how to drink their whiskey. Um, I try to make whiskey that is uh, definitely drinkable by itself uh, on a large format cube or, you know, in a margarita. Um, but uh, a lot of our whiskeys can be drank both ways. Uh, I, I, you know, when I'm drinking whiskey, I'm typically, you know, drinking whiskeys neat. But as you can see, I don't mind uh, drinking whiskey and it's, it's, you know, it adds a different uh, flair when you're using it in a margarita. And so it's just, it's a completely different drink when you're using whiskey as opposed to uh, tequila. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter which one you get. Um, they're all very different. They're all unique. They're all, you know, like my unique little children. Uh, they all have their own uh, special you know, things going on about them. Uh, but I definitely suggest trying them by themselves, by themselves at first, just so you know what kind of flavor profile they are and then have at it, you know, do, uh, do with them as you will. And they're all grain to glass. All, all of your expressions are grain to glass right here in Texas, right? You're not That's right. importing spirits yeah. from somewhere else and aging them. These are all, you're making it from scratch, correct? That's right. Yeah. And that's, it, that's something to be said just because there's a lot of companies out there that are sourcing whiskey from other states that have been doing this a lot longer, but we feel it's very important to make whiskey uh, from grain to glass here um, and aging it here because it does affect the final flavor. The, the terroir of where these uh, spirits come from and how they're aged have an effect on in, fi in their final flavor. And we're we're very proud of our, uh, you know, of our flavor that we uh, are able to obtain because of the surroundings. Um, and uh, we are actually a part of, uh, we're a founding member of uh, the Texas Whiskey Association. Uh, I definitely would suggest if anybody's interested in Texas whiskeys and what it really means to be a Texas whiskey is go look up Texas Whiskey Association. Uh, we are a certified Texas whiskey along with, uh, I think about 15, we may be up to 16 uh, other members um, uh, in the Texas area that are actually making whiskey from Grand to Glass here in Texas. Um, and um, also check out the Texas Whiskey Trail. The Texas Whiskey Trail will uh, allows you to go and visit all of these different distilleries and see what they have to offer. And uh, much like scotch, you go to a different distillery, you're gonna get a different whiskey. We all have our own unique uh, flavors and that is because of the different areas that we're aging our whiskey and making our whiskey in. And uh, it's just kind of a neat experience to try all these different flavors uh, made here in your uh, home state. So give them a, give them a look-see. One of the next person that we have coming up is, is Alana Louise Lyons. She is an illustrator, designer, just awesome person. Uh, her husband got her into fly fishing. And she's done work for me. She's done work for Davin. She's done work for Chris Barclay. She's done work for Aaron. She's done work for, for Matt. Um, but she's also done work for Yeti and Patagonia and uh, Howler Brothers and the big names like that. Like um, 
She's I got my bandana. She made me a really cool bandana design for all the nets that I use. And uh, her attention to detail is is crazy. She um, we discussed it and decided to use the uh, the specific fish that the nets are kind of targeted for, like a Guadalupe bass, a Rio Grande cichlid, uh, redfish for the bigger net that I make. And she <clears throat> one of the best pieces of art that I think she's done is the bottle sticker for Davin. Um, which is pretty sweet. You want to talk about that? Dad? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was just one of those, um, one of those pieces that I was struggling with. I really wanted to, uh, create a, um, something, you know, an image that spoke both on the whiskey side and the river side. And I just was, I just could not come up with anything. Uh, but after talking with Alana for a little bit, um, really not very long, she just, yeah, I got this. Let me, let me see what I can do. And I couldn't believe when she came up with this, um, with this, uh, it was really literally quite literally, uh, the shape of my whiskey bottles set on its side and the whiskey that would normally be at the top of the bottle is now kind of level at the side of the bottle. And the, there it is. Yeah. Aaron's got it. And then she added the fish in the whiskey and there's so much attention to detail in this. And I, I mean, I just, I was lost for words when I saw it. It's like, that's, I mean, she just took my ideas and just, just, you know, just put it out there, but it was so, so attention uh, to detail that the fish are actually in the water column where they should be the gar is at the bottom, the carp is towards the bottom. And then as you start to get a little bit higher, then there's bass and a little bit higher in the water column, you've got sunfish and cichlids and, uh, and then trout uh, hitting the top of the water for a fly that's in the bottle as well. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, she knocked it out uh, as she does with everything that she touches. I, that, was so. the first, that was the first thing I noticed too when I saw your uh, logo, Davin, was that um, I mean, the bass isn't just a bass, it's Guadalupe bass, right? That's and, right, yeah. I mean, she, the gar is not just gar, it's spotted gar. And I mean, she really did, um, you know, it, it takes someone who's an angler uh, to know how to do that. Um, and I was reminded of a story about Alana. Uh, we were talking about whiskey and we were out on the Lempasas one day, uh, me, her, and Jake. And um, Jake's a, a former real ale em uh, employee, brewer, who um, is uh, in right. charge of the cask program at Austin Beer Works now. And he brews, right. some, yeah. brews, brews some fantastic beer. Um, but um, uh, Jake accidentally uh, hooked Alana on his back cast. And, um, you know, thank God it was her husband and not one of us. But, uh, you know, so we, we did a little streamside surgery and I asked her if she wanted to go back and get the first aid kit. And, uh, you know, I think we disinfected the wound that went through her eyebrow actually. And, um, it was her eyelid, you know, she, wasn't it? No, it was her. It was really her eyebrow, but oh, okay. I mean, it was really close to her eye. You know, thanks to the um, a total accident, could have happened to anyone. Uh, and uh, and Jake, Jake felt horrible about it, but um, you know, we I think we put some hand sanitizer on it or something, and she took a slug of whiskey out of the flask. I, I said, "Do you want to go back?" And she's like, "Heck no, let's fish." And I I swear. <laughs> Within two minutes, she had another Guadalupe bass on the end of her line. So uh, that's the kind of English. That's how you do it. Yeah. That's right. That's how you do it. She is legit. Persistence. And Jake is actually on here, and he said, yeah, she's cool. I can confirm. And then he said fake news about the hook story. <laughs> but he, he actually said it was true. So yeah, let's go ahead and fact checking Jake. us. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, we're at uh, Dog Park Blue. I think this is a spot that um, Jake and I shared with Aaron, and now you guys have access to it through his book. Um, I just caught a pretty big sunfish. Let me see if I could grab him. He's kind of angry. I have a runny nose, so excuse me. Pretty big guy. Let him go. Um, but what I really love about Aaron's book is not only that um, he shares specific access points, but I also love the history that he shares along with it. I don't think that's something I've seen in um, 
other Texas fly fishing books. Of course, I haven't read them all, but um, I highly recommend this book, especially for people who are starting out. Thank you so much and wish me luck out here. Bye. Just an update. Not too far away from the spot where I got that sunfish. Caught this guy. Dog Park Blue. I forgot to mention that the bass was on this fly, the Master Splinter mouse pattern. This is a fly pattern that Aaron shared with me, and it's probably one of my most um, productive flies for bass specifically. Yeah. I want to hit that spot. It looks like a cool spot. <clears throat> yeah, it does. Um, she, she mentioned the fly, Aaron. Is that, is that something you use a lot? Yeah. So, um, uh, the guy who's, uh, writes about fly fishing from field and stream actually came up with this, uh, master splinter mouse. And I, since I typically am throwing a three weight or even a two weight, uh, I downsized it and, and made a few other little changes and it's a super easy tie. Um, so, uh, and it works great, uh, on bass and on sunfish. I usually tie it in a size eight or size uh, 10 even, uh, Firehole 839, which is a heavy streamer hook. And um, I don't know that they really think it's a, 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 a tiny mouse. Um, you know, I don't know what the fish think it is, but they like it. Um, so I tell you what, as a bonus, I will send one of those flies out with each of the books that are, uh, are, are won uh, during this broadcast. So I'll whip those up tomorrow and Get them out in the mail Monday. Nice, nice. That is yeah. Awesome. Those top water, yeah. Those top water bugs. I mean, they just you they can't beat it. Uh, whether it's a bug or a mouse or, uh, yeah. I think what it is is that because aren't you using uh, are you using squirrel squirrel hair as the as the body? Yeah, it's pine, yeah. Um, it's pine squirrel, a uh, little pine squirrel squirrel uh, zonker strips. Like I don't know if you guys can can see that. Yeah, yeah, um, and that. That pine squirrel fur just dances when you just let it sit. That that fur just keeps on moving, and that's what's really kind of I think tantalizing to those fish is give it a couple of pops, let it sit, and that fur just kind of keeps on moving around, and it's just irresistible for them. And you can use a and you can use a rabbit zonker too. Um, when I use a rabbit zonker, I, I thin it out a little bit and shorten the hairs uh, some, uh, just for the size flies I tie. I mean, you could tie it up to whatever you want to. Um, I did want to say something about that uh, dog park blue uh, and a lot of, I was working my way down Onion Creek and uh, wasn't familiar with that part of it. And uh, Alana and Jake, that's close to their home. That's a place they fish a lot. And um, they offered to take me out there and it resulted in uh, three more described waves in the book uh, because you can just keep going and going and going. And um, this whole area is uh, Dog Park Blue itself uh, is a 99 acre park, um, but it's part of a huge stretch of greenbelt along uh, Lower Onion Creek that has been reclaimed. Uh, they used to be neighborhoods. So it's a little surreal. You go into Dog Park Blue and there, there's ribbon curving and there are street signs. Uh, there just aren't any houses anymore. And uh, what happened is after the, the last big flood there, and there've been a number of them over the last decade, um, FEMA and the city of Austin went in and made offers to all the homeowners and said, Hey, we'll buy out your house. Uh, so we can, you know, I think it was really so we can quit paying out, uh, insurance. Uh, but they went in and bought all the properties and federal guidelines require that all that land, um, be returned to green space in perpetuity. So there is something like six miles of, uh, riparian, uh, habitat along Onion Creek between interstate 35 and William Cannon there that um, is now green space and it, and it also provides, so it protects the, it protects the river, um, but it also provides uh, incredible access for anglers. I was, I was hoping to have some sound effects for this thing, um, but my nerd level didn't quite pan out. So if, if you could just, uh, if you could announce that you're going to give the fly with each book one more time, I'm going to try something here. Okay. But dramatically um, this time. All right, so tell you what, as a special deal just for today, uh, I will um, give away one mini master splinter mouse with every book that we uh, that is awarded tonight.
That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> pathetic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lackluster. Uh, the, Good try. Good effort. Hey, hey you got you got to fall to get up, right, or something like that. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Trent Shepard is the next guy that we have coming up, and um, it, it it's pretty funny how I met Trent. Uh, living in Austin, my boys like to ride bikes, and we we went on like a five mile bike ride a day. And uh, as a treat, we'll take him downtown to the Ninth Street Dirt Track, um, which is the Duncan Park off Ninth Street in Lamar. And they got a bunch of uh, BMX uh, dirt jumps and whatnot. And there's a little pump track there for the kids to go on. And so I took my kids, this is probably two, three years, maybe three, four years ago. And uh, we were hanging out there and we park, we get out, <clears throat> and there's this guy sitting there watching his sons, who are similar in age, and he's picking a banjo. I was like, dude, check this guy out, man. This is awesome. And I, I said, hey, and he, I had like a R.L. Winston Rod shirt on something like that. He's like, oh, man, you fly fish? I was like, yeah, a little bit. And uh, so we started chatting, and we have kept in touch, and we we met just randomly at different events at the Yeti shop or at uh, Sportsman's Finest and just throughout the thing. So we, we text each other, and um, – he he's a really good dude. He owns a design firm that, that specializes in web design, and uh, he he's gonna come in uh, with his video from the Lano, and uh, which is which is not in the book, but it, it's only you your book criteria was a, an hour away, and the the Lano is maybe an hour and a half away. So we'll, let's hear from him, and also he he was nice enough to play the fiddle for us, and it's just one of those sounds that is timeless and it's perfect and if you were here at the very beginning of the show then you saw him or you didn't see him but you heard his fiddle uh play there and he's going to talk about the lando and what um central texas means to him and he's going to play us a song at the end there so here we go what's up y'all i'm trent shepherd i'm sitting here on the banks of the beautiful wild mighty Llano River, a place that is very dear to me. Um, I've been fishing out here for 15 to 20 years. I proposed to my wife on this beautiful river. My kids are out there swimming in the background somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is a really special place to me. One of the things I love about this river is the wildness and the fact that it's the only river still in Texas that is not dammed. Uh, it flows freely. Um, in fact, where I'm sitting here, this was completely underwater and that flood of the fall of October 2018 and this river is always changing it's always the fishing holes are always in a different spot and the populations are always changing they're kind of coming back now since that flood but um yeah I've been fishing it for a long time I love uh the Guadalupe bass population out here is awesome the um largemouth same catfish are out here lots there's carp there's alligator gar sorry there's spotted gar um and love fly fishing for all these fish. It's a whole lot of fun, but um, probably my favorite thing is just the beauty out here. You know, we're in a spot here where there's a lot of granite. Uh, the geology is really unique here, kind of this little patch in the, in the middle of Texas, and um, really special place to me and my family. Um, yeah, and uh, my buddy Dustin reached out to me to ask me to play a little bit of fiddle and talk about the Lano, and uh, I was happy to do that. Um, but I'd be remiss without mentioning how grateful I am to be part of the Central Texas fly fishing community, uh, which is really trumps everything else I just talked about. Honestly, the, the people and the personalities and the passion um, that are that are part of this this community are incredible. And uh, I, I think I got I got to mention my buddy Alvin Dido that I, I met 20, 25 years ago uh, at the uh, the Austin Angler. Bought my first fly rod from him and. I've had many fun adventures with him, and, you know, I love what All Water Guides is doing in terms of um, conservation and cleanup on the lower Colorado River, and, yeah, man, there's just, there's a lot of great folks doing good things, and I'm just, I'm happy to, to be a part of it and, uh, and play, play a small part um, in that scene, and uh, if y'all haven't been to Lano, I encourage you to come check it out. It's beautiful. It's real accessible. Um for folks that are just getting into fly fishing, I always say bass fishing is a great place to start uh, because 
they're pretty forgiving fish and you really have to kind of gradually hone your skills in terms of aiming at a spot or a target and then catching and then playing a fish to bring it in. And that's useful when you go down to the salt and are fishing for redfish, which is probably my favorite way to fly fish, or when you go up to the mountains and are fishing for trout. Uh, bass are just a great place to start. And uh, yeah, we're an hour and a half from Austin right here at the Lano, and you can see how beautiful it is. So um, encourage you guys to check it out, do your part to be a part of the Central Texas fly fishing community and, and help conserve our rivers. All right, y'all. Adios. <laughs>
just kind of figured it out on my own. But when I got into fly fishing, it was totally different. Um, the community around Central Texas that is involved in fly fishing is one of such varied perspective and worldly experiences. I can't quite describe how much it opened my eyes to realize that fly fishing is truly a therapeutic experience for a lot of people and we can all connect with these people and in central texas i'm told we have one of the greatest fly fishing communities in in the united states so i'm kind of proud to be involved with that i've met so many people i wouldn't have otherwise interacted with that come from all walks of life uh you know different socioeconomic backgrounds different occupational backgrounds different experience levels um, all trying to accomplish the same thing on the water and that's typically trying to learn whether that's about nature or about themselves or they're trying to catch some fish and do that in a gorgeous spot and I think that Central Texas has to offer that more so than a lot of other places we have the public access it's guaranteed by the state of Texas and we have the ability to find these little oases between urban areas that I think a lot of us really enjoy being able to dip down to the water for 15 minutes if it's only a few minutes away and cast a line real quick and catch a fish and we ha all have an opportunity to do that we're all you know within a few minutes of rivers around here so that's a great thing so you know we've got this connection to this land here in central Texas it's been continuously inhabited for over 10,000 years and you can see why I think Aaron touches on it great he goes into the history in his book about how the attraction to everything around here is what has drawn people here for so long is what continues to draw people here and this population boom that we're seeing is something to embrace and I think the fly fishing community is really realizing that we've got a community of makers who have figured that they can make a whole lifestyle out of this and do what they love to do. Um, whether that's making nets related to fishing local species or, you know, making artwork that's related to fishing local species. There's, you know, authors writing books about this. That's, that's impressive to see and it doesn't seem like we're seeing this anywhere else in the nation. So fly fishing central texas specifically to me is about about developing that community and kind of protecting that community that we are developing not just protecting the water but protecting the people supporting the people supporting local businesses within the fly fishing community i think that's a big aspect of it we're all kind of taking care of each other here so to me that's what fly fishing central texas is it's all about the community of fly fishermen thank you Thanks, John. I appreciate you took the time to do that. You know, you, you mentioned a, a couple things. I'm, well, you mentioned a lot of great nuggets there. But um, one was, uh, you know, like Eric Larson says in the comments, that fly fishing is a great tool for therapy. Uh, I mean, it helps me. I, I know just even getting in the stream here in the water and just getting some time to yourself or hanging out with some buddies and, you know, trying to pull a fish is probably the last thing that you're really – trying to scratch that itch it's more of getting out there it's more of the adventure it's more of the the hike the the chicker bites that reminds you of it <laughs> you know six days later but um it's it, it's definitely a therapeutic deal and uh, there's a, a hashtag on social it's fly fishing saves lives and that's 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 used quite a bit and um aaron i mean you know a lot about that you wrote about that in the book yeah i mean um uh, you know, my, my, my wife, well, she read the book too. She, she helped me edit the book. She edited every single page that went into the book before, uh, it went through the other five ed editors. But, uh, so she knows the joke, but, um, the joke in the book is as far as my wife knows, fly fishing is cheaper than therapy. And, um, it's, uh, it, it is not an exaggeration, uh, to say that it has saved my life. And, um, Eric <clears throat> Larson, you just mentioned, um, He's uh, one of the leaders of Project Healing Waters fly fishing in the area. Um, and that's a, uh, an organization specifically for people 
who have any VA rating whatsoever uh, or anyone who wants to come volunteer and help out. Um, but it's a, an incredible deal to help uh, folks who are dealing with uh, uh, trauma, um, tra post-traumatic stress. Um, they're uh, dealing with uh, it, possibly injuries, whether those are, are uh, mental injuries or, or um, physical injuries. Um, and uh, 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 Temple Fork Outfitters is a big supporter of that. Um, they provide these guys with, and gals uh, with a rod. Um, they get to build a rod uh, during the program. They learn to tie flies. They have a supportive community to teach them fly fishing and fly tying. Um, and uh, Aaron uh, up in Minnesota, um, who popped up a little while ago, um, the other Aaron, um, we actually have a, a, a Facebook group, uh, the Aaron group, but uh, that he founded. But uh, Aaron's also incredibly involved with that uh, up there. So. Yeah, I mean, and it's not just for, you know, obviously veterans or anyone else. I mean, anyone who's, you know, Jeff Troutman talks about this a lot. Uh, and that was the whole impetus behind Remote No Pressure. Uh, you know, he was a, uh, he, he worked in finance on Wall Street and was just stressed out by his job and thought he might be going crazy. Went to his therapist and she said, you need a hobby. And uh, he had won a, a, a fly rod in a, a sales contest and uh, found some old guys in the local club to, uh, teach him how to use it and um you know here we are today so uh, he has a whole album uh out called songs about fly fishing which you guys sh should go check out for sure Yeah, man. Who you got? <laughs> this Congratulations, Blake. Mr. Right Blake on, man. And hold. All right, man. Congratulations. <laughs> Trust me, you will not be able to put this book down. It's uh it, my book has uh, it's highlighted. It's uh, it's got uh, whiskey stains, coffee stains, river stains. Uh, it's got uh, post-it notes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you may want to get two copies: one for looking <laughs> pretty on your bookshelf, and one for actual use. Because uh, eventually, the one that you're actually using, you're going to need the other one. Trust me. My audio was muted there a little bit, so I, I think y'all got the gist of it. Blake Holt won. Aaron just made the book out to Mr. Blake M. Holt, and uh, we'll get a hold of you, buddy, and uh, we'll send it out your way. So There we go. Awesome. Uh, I guess we could answer a question. Uh, Valerie asks, uh, what do you suggest for somebody new to fly fishing on the lower income you know, where can they try it? How much should they start out with a basic level and, and uh, with what? Thanks. And I guess I could say that there's, there's some combo kits out there that are pretty affordable where it comes with a reel, a line, a leader, some flies, and an actual rod. You can get them at Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's. Um, I think some of the shops actually. All of our local well. fly shops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sportsman's Finest, Living Waters, uh, you know, uh, Real Fly, they, all of our local shops are going to carry uh, these beginner rods. Uh, and, you know, you're going to, if you go to a local fly shop, you're going to get uh, a little more in depth, um, you know, education as to what you're buying, what flies to use. It's, um, I mean, your local fly shops are in invaluable uh, resource along, you know, obviously with this book, but being able to talk to uh, people who are on the water and using this equipment and, uh, you know, that's what you're getting uh, when you're buying local. And also by buying local, you're just helping support these, uh, these companies uh, stay alive in these hard times. So we definitely encourage you guys uh, buy local if you, if you ever can. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I I was yeah. just going to say that the, the local fly shop is a concentrated spot of info. They'll, they'll actually be able to hook you up with any of the clubs that might be around there. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to go sit at one of the meetings and, um, you know, 
a lot of the a lot of the times some of the meetings they have a table that somebody will have like a um, it's just like a sell table like a for sale table where people will bring all the gear and they'll they'll sell it out or you could actually email some of the board members and um, they'll be able to direct you and any type of persons that may have some donations. Uh, I'm the VP of membership at Guadalupe River Trout Unlimited. We have a, a kids camp um, every winter, and that's it, it's two nights uh, or yeah, one night, two days. You get to fish. They teach you everything. It's it's a really good time. Um, I think my kids are getting old enough to where we can actually participate in it. Um, so yeah, that's thank you for the question. I appreciate that. Um, the next person we're actually going to hear from is. Edgar Diaz of Sightline Provisions, which uh, he is here in Austin. He makes some awesome bracelets or cuffs, whichever you'd like, and other jewelry as well um, that, that kind of spreads the gamut of, of the outdoors, whether it be fly fishing, um, you know, hunting. And one of the coolest pieces that he made for me lately was a custom cichlid piece for a Rio Grande cichlid that um, that we just knocked it out of the park. It was really neat. You want to say anything about Edgar before we we roll this clip? I I want to say he's a cool cat, and uh, you know, uh, before before he uh, got into making uh, this wearable art, um, he was a sculptor of some renown. Uh, you know, people collected his pieces all over the country, and um, I uh, will. I hope I never forget. Uh, uh, one morning on Onion Creek, um, right before Christmas, so it was winter time, and Davin and Edgar and I met down there. And um, Edgar steps out of his truck and flicks his hand up, and something comes swir swirling towards me, and it is uh, it is a Rio Grande cichlid uh, cuff, uh, which I still have to this day and frequently wear, and. Um, I mean, just the generosity of that. I mean, I knew Edgar, you know, just from having met him at a couple of events and talking to him online, uh, but I'd never really spent any time with him before that. And uh, just the generosity of that moment uh, really kind of took my breath away. And he's that way with everything. Uh, right. What, you know, any, yeah. any nonprofit, uh, you know, uh, the, the guides down in the Bahamas, you know, who were devastated by the hurricane. Um, Edward, Edgar is always right there and uh, willing to pitch in. Yeah, that's just the way Edgar is. He's just one of those, you know, a, the, a common a common word uh, that keeps on being brought up is community. And Edgar has always been uh, a part of that community. It, his his sense of community, though, has spread, you know, far and wide beyond Texas. He's, um, you know, he's definitely one of the first people to help out uh, for, you know, causes for the rivers, um, you know, uh, to keep rivers free stone and not dammed up or, you know, uh, for, you know, civil rights movements like we have going on right now. We, I mean, we all need to come together, but Edgar is definitely one of those guys that is just, um, he's looking at other people before himself. And uh, yeah, he's he's been a great friend. Um, He's a, yeah, he's just a very giving person and we all appreciate uh, knowing him and being close to him. Yeah, especially what he did with um, the retailer takeover during COVID. Um, I mean, he was working crazy hours. And um, the, the only thing that's the downfall of Edgar is his size. He's like nine feet tall. So when, when he catches a fish, it's, it could be like a 20 inch fish, but it, in his hands, it looks like a, a, a ten inch wild rainbow or something like that. Your hands are too big. We need yeah, we need we, just, we need a better hand model. Could, like, minimize them. He probably stepped out of the truck, then stepped over the truck to throw you Hey guys, it's Edgar with Sightline Provisions and I wanted to give you a few thoughts about my home waters, my area here in Central Texas and how fun it is and how amazing uh, our fisheries are for fly fishing. And I love surprising people when they wonder what we do, what, how, what we fly fish here. 
in uh, the Austin area for, and I just ramble off a list of fish that they had no idea existed here. So, um, you know, whether it's warm water, uh, obviously largemouth bass, our state fish, the Guadalupe bass, uh, carp, uh, obviously sunfish, uh, one of my favorites, the Rio Grande cichlid. I mean, it's just amazing. And then we are able to also chase cold water species like uh, rainbow trout and the brown trout in the Guadalupe River, uh, thanks to GRTU as well. Um, so I'm so proud to be part of this group of, of uh, businesses, outdoor brands that just really, really uh, put an emphasis on how amazing our Central Texas fisheries are. So thank you to Aaron also for putting together that book. Um, I'm almost through it. I'm, I'm probably in the last chapter and I just really appreciated the effort and the research that it took to create such an amazing uh, reference uh, guide to our Central Texas fisheries. So um, thanks again. Uh, and thank you for everyone's support in making my brand um, a brand that can that I can be proud of and so um, cheers Cheers, buddy. He's been texting us and and letting us know that uh, our audio is messed up So I think we've got it mostly ironed out over here. So uh, Appreciate it. <clears throat> Hope to see you soon. I'm gonna wet a line pretty soon here um, He's he's done some work with uh, Josh Crumpton over at Spoke Hollow Outfitters, which Davin guides for. And um, go ahead, Davin, you can talk about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, so Spoke Hollow Outfitters uh, came about about seven months ago. Um, it was actually, uh, I met Josh back in April uh, last year. And uh, in that short period of time, he's one of those people that, you know, you just, it's like you've known him forever. Um, I, I'm sure you guys have that same uh, feeling about him. You, you just, you meet the guy and he's just, you know, just so uh, welcoming and warming that it's just, it's like you guys, it's like we've known him for a long, long time. And uh, we had this idea about, well, he had an idea about uh, creating a, uh, an outfitter that helped uh, conserve the um, the land that he and his family are on and own in Wimberley. Uh, it's a thousand acre uh, property in Wimberley um, that was, it's been in his family, uh, his wife's family for um, since the, oh, shoot, the 1940s. And um, it was previously leased out for cattle because it's, I mean, it's Wimberley. It's very hilly. It's rocky. Uh, you're not going to do much agriculture out there, but um, the other thing that you can do is uh, hunt, you know, and so he had this vision of uh, creating a hunting outfitter on property uh, and for a proportion of a large proportion of that money that is being taken in uh, is um, is meant for conservation is meant to take out cedar to uh, plant um, natural grasses and take out invasive species and kind of bring that thousand acres back to the way it used to be. And um, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's got such a passion for the outdoors and such a knowledge uh, of the, the property and Texas in general um, that it's, it's, it's hard not to go there and just be, um, just be mesmerized by the beauty and also see his vision when you go out to the ranch um, and what it can be and what it, you know, what it, what it really will be. Um, it's, it's and an so, yeah, it's an absolutely gorgeous property uh, with uh, frontage on the Blanco. And then uh, of course us box canyons and um, uh, uh, you know, the, the hills uh, and valleys on the ranch. And um, I, I think the thing that struck, struck me about Josh's vision out there is that, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I have this exactly right, but my understanding was, and you may know better, Davin, is that it, it really came down to a choice for, for the family members who are all partners in that ranch. Um, look, do we, do we sell this big chunk of land to developers and get our money out of it, or, or do we preserve it? And if we preserve it, though, how do we pay for that? 
And um, so the outfitting, the the hunting, the the fishing, um, all, you know, all of the educational stuff that's coming up there. He's he's partnered with Stewards of the Wild, and we're talking about doing some kids camps out there, and uh, and maybe doing some stuff uh, with some uh, with some school kids who uh, are in really, um, you know, uh, maybe socioeconomically um, disadvantaged school districts uh, in in the Austin area, and. Um, all of that, all of the income that's generated from that goes to pay for preserving the ranch, uh, as you just said. And um, I, I mean, what a, I mean, what a huge task and also what a noble endeavor that is, I think, um, because uh, as we know, population's booming in Central Texas and um, we need those green spaces. We need to save as many of them as we can. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's really what... It, you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head um, is, you know, we're trying to focus on uh, conservation of the land and it was a choice uh, of selling or how do we uh, generate money. And so we decided that we would love to try to generate uh, this, these funds in order to save and conserve this property through uh, the outfitter itself, hunting and fishing. And so with that, we'd like to focus at, uh, on adult onset hunting. Uh, we'd like to focus on, um, you know, educating people as to their surroundings. You know, we're going to educate people is in foraging bushcraft. Um, you know, that goes along with, you know, skinning your own animal and tanning the hide and cooking your animal properly. And, you know, um, we're really in the education, um, field. Um, the other projects that we're going to be working on are um, getting more people of ethnicity into the outdoors and, um, you know, just trying to um, bring everybody that may not have, you know, people that may not have the, um, the uh, means to get outside, we're going to get them outside and um, have people, you know, educate people as to what being outside actually means um, and um, appreciating it. And by doing that, it's just going to perpetuate more conservation. I mean, if you appreciate something, you want to protect it. You want to, you want to have it. You want to, um, and you want to keep it a certain pristine way. Um, and uh, we want to educate people as to what it means to be public lands versus private lands. And, you know, private landowners really do care about, uh, conserving their own lands um, and we should all help preserve our public lands as well because those are ours um, but you know and um, that's a and that and that's a real uh, tension on the Blanco River in particular mm -hmm. um, and something I talk about in the book is um, you know and in the book I focus about uh, the places where we can access the river and I've already heard from some anglers who have the book that uh, you know they got harassed at one of the locations there on the Blanco and, um, you know, I, I was like, I know I checked that. I know it's public. You know, I know the access is public. And I'm like, but what if I was wrong? And I went back and I looked it up and I got into some databases. And I'm like, no, that, that's absolutely, you know, county right away. They had every right to be there. And there was just a really disgruntled landowner, adjacent landowner who didn't want him there. And um, but the flip side of that difficult to access is that is that ranchers like Josh, ranch, ranchers like um, um, uh, you know, the guy who owns, uh, the Halifax ranch downstream from him, um, they are, they are preserving the river and they are preserving the springs that feed the river in the riparian habitat. And, um, uh, I mean, they're doing, they're doing great work. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to have public access to the Blanco and, and all of these rivers so that, so that, as you say, people can get to know them. Uh, and love them and um, hopefully speak up for them. Um, so, so it's not just Josh raising his hand and saying, oh, hey, my river went dry. Can we do something? It's a whole bunch of people saying, hey, this river went dry and uh, we, we need water in this river, you know, or whatever the case may be. So um, it's one of those age old tensions in outdoor riding and um, John Gearock and a lot of people who have been at this a lot longer than me have talked about it. But um, you know, do we do more harm by highlighting these streams and getting more people out there? Um, or do we help them? Obviously, I came down on the side of we need more advocates. We need more people out there to know these streams and to love these streams. And, and the fact is, right now, 
uh, at least. Our streams are incredibly underutilized. Um, you know, you can go all day and not see another another angler uh, on a lot of these rivers. That's true. Well, let's see what he has to say. Hi, I'm Josh Crumpton with Spokalo Outfitters. I want to take a moment to talk to you guys about what fly fishing in the Texas Hill Country means to me. Um, as a young man, I learned to fly fish in Colorado. I grew up back and forth between Texas and Colorado. I'm a seventh generation Texan. And for majority of my life, fly fishing meant trout, mountains, and cool streams far away from Texas. And that's all it meant to me. Until about a decade ago, um, I started to turn my attention to native species. Um, our Guadalupe bass, the cichlids, the sunfish, and that has changed my world significantly. Um, fly fishing was something and has always been something that's a good escape for me from the day-to-day -day life and a way to connect with nature. Um, until I started fly fishing in the Texas Hill Country, that was relegated to the times that I was in Colorado. Um, and over the past decade, learning how exciting fishing in Texas can be and fly fishing specifically in Texas can be has expanded my opportunity and it's changed my life. And it is now my vocation and it means a lot to me to teach other people this sport and how to do it in the great state of Texas. So fly fishing in the hill country to me is life. Thanks, Josh. Um, yeah, we'll have to, to get back out there soon, man. We, we took my kids out there and we had a really good time. So looking forward to it. <clears throat> um, it's time for the fourth book giveaway. And um, the, the person that won it is named Kim Sears. And she'd like it made out to the Sears. S-E-A-R-S apostrophe. Okay, the Sears. All right. Congratulations. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> and you've gone through that whole thing, huh? <laughs> I've almost got, I've got, I'm down to the last little bit. <laughs> That's where it gets good, right? That's right. <laughs> it's just all that flavor is, yeah. all that flavor is right there at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so the, next up we have Jeff Trotman again, and um, he's singing uh, another song, um, which is called Heaven. And then after that song, we're going to give away the big grand prize. So you, um, while Aaron signs that, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and roll Jeff and uh, we'll play some music for you guys and get ready for this grand prize. Thank you, Aaron. And the other song that you mentioned in your book is my song, Heaven. And, uh, and I'll play that. I, I appreciate this. This is one of my most played songs. And um, it's the one thing that I think you and I really relate to. The most is the feeling of heaven when we're on the river, um, and it's the closest thing to heaven on um, on this earth for us. So, sun begins to shine, the fog appears and then subsides, like the thoughts inside my head, all is clear. I on a local fly, one I've never tried, and hope and praise and drifts by the days, oh, they said it be. Where the streets aren't made of gold, ivory, a precious stone, so the mud and rocks they're gonna have to do. The cries of angels sing, but this river sure is clear. Oh, this is the heaven that I know. Clouds began to gather, just in the perfect weather. To be out on this river all alone. Slightly overcast, but this one will be my last. But I swear I said that a thousand casts to go Where the streets aren't made of gold, ivory, precious stones 
Silver mud and rocks they're gonna have to do The cries of angels seem but this river show sure is clear Oh this is the heaven that I know And that sweet by and by winding rivers hooks and flies it's here I live, it's here I'll die And I see, see by and by Where the streets are made of gold, ivory, precious stones So the mud and rocks they're gonna have to do The cries of angels here, but this river show is clear Oh the heaven that I know Love you Aaron Congratulations on your book Thank you so much Thanks Jeff Appreciate it man That was awesome uh, You know thanks to everybody That participated In this this show It was a, it was an idea that Aaron Or Davin and I had on the uh, on the old cell phone there and it turned into this so it's it's something and uh, we're, we're happy to have created it and produced it and put it out there uh, thanks to all the people that participated and that sent in videos uh, we'll try and figure out how to do this live I think that'd be pretty cool uh, maybe we'll do another one I don't know are you gonna write another book Aaron <laughs> You know, I, I'm hoping to edit some other books. Um, we've, we've actually, uh, you know, have a, a, a fantastic writer in Houston who's under contract to do uh, Fly Fishing Houston in Southeast Texas. And, um, um, you know, we're really hoping that uh, Dallas and North Texas is going to uh, get covered in uh, San Antonio and the Texas Hill Country. Talking to some friends about that, some of whom are watching right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, so um, I, I don't know that I'm interested in going out. I, I don't know that my marriage could survive and my family could survive me uh, uh, taking another um, uh, not 45 months, but uh, two and a half years of uh, you know fishing uh, in all my spare time and writing. But um, but yeah, someday I'll write another book. But in the meantime, I'll edit some. I, I saw um, Aaron in Minnesota had a question. Um, can you ship whiskey to Minnesota? Davin, is that a possibility? Yeah, no, unfortunately, uh, I can't ship whiskey to Minnesota or outside of the state of Texas. Actually, we can't even ship inside our own state. We're, there are legislations going on right now that uh, we're trying to be able to, to do that. Uh, but uh, the old guard is uh, holding on very tightly to um, keeping sales uh, offline and going and visiting places uh, within, you know, since the recent uh, things that have been going on, we've been lucky enough to be able to take orders online, uh, but for pickup only uh, before this, you couldn't even order online. Um, and so, Unfortunately, no, we cannot ship outside of the state or ship anywhere really within our state. But um, there is legislation going on uh, that we're trying to get that to uh, to change. So, so Aaron, um, in the meantime, um, send me an email, and uh, <laughs> I, I might have to ship you some homemade jam or or something. Um, I think that's doable. That's I, I, jam is jam is jam is the jam. Let me tell you that this jam is really good. <laughs> It looked like, uh, are there any other questions we need to answer, Dustin? Oh, man. Somebody wanted to know if you could fish off, uh, or you could fly fish off your tugboat. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I mean, it's allowed, uh, and it just depends on how busy we are, if I'm not supposed to be doing something else. Um, I, I will tell you that a tugboat makes a lousy fly fishing skiff. Um, but, uh, actually right next to our dock, uh, uh, in Corpus Christi in the inner Harbor, there's a Creek that runs in and, um, it's lined with, uh, really thick mangroves and, um, there are, uh, mangrove snapper, redfish, uh, trout, of course, ladyfish. And this last week there was a tarpon in there as well, uh, a juvenile tarpon. And, uh, uh, I threw at it and had some refusals and I missed it once. Uh, my buddy Jess, who was on that road trip with me and Chris, 
uh, actually caught it, landed it on his Barclay, wow. uh, fly, his fiberglass fly rod. He's, he's the guy on the front cover of the book, is he not? Yeah, I'm afraid that probably cost us sales. I don't know. Who wants to look at Jess that much? But uh, no, yeah, he is. He's, he's one of, I've known Jess. I've known Jess since he was 18 years old, and he's a, he's a good friend. But um, uh, yeah, so it, uh, yeah, so, and sometimes we tie up, as you know, next to some dock lights uh, on purpose because there'll be redfish cruising, and we can stand on the back deck and, and cast the redfish. It's kind of fun. Alana, um, Alana wanted to know where your cowboy hat was, and she says hi, and but she also wants the fossils and arrowheads in the next book. She's, she's, Man, she's want, found some really cool stuff. She has found some really cool stuff. And uh, there's a guy on Instagram, Swamp Dogger, uh, who is local. And I've never met him in person. But he finds cool stuff like every single time he goes out. And I want to know what his secret is. But uh, it's um, – it's, uh, yeah, so there are some fossils in the book, Alana. Read closer. No, there. I mean, there are, uh, but uh, yeah, not a lot of arrowheads. Uh, I didn't find. It. I didn't find many. <laughs> well, cool, man. Uh, everybody said thanks. Great job. That was fun. Uh, what do you say we do this giveaway? Man, I'm anxious to hear. Great prize. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the image. Here. Wait. Yeah. So, what is the giveaway? So let's talk about what the prize is. So it's uh, it's another book. This, this tugboat driver named Aaron wrote a book called Fly Fishing Austin in Central Texas. He'll sign it. Um, it's a, a Poquito fly, uh, a landing net that I make uh, from Heartwood Trade. Yeah, I'll go back to the, the three up here so you can see it. Davin has one. my Poquito. Yeah. That's, that's one. <laughs> and that's Aaron's. It's a sweet little net, super lightweight, fits in your pocket. It's got a deep bag, so it's got larger fish. Um, uh, whiskey made for, yeah. is made out of whiskey wood, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, this one's going to be a native uh, Paquito. And, and this we'll see is what else uh, we got. Sycamore. Yeah. We have. So that'll, uh, be, that'll be Sycamore from uh, from Georgetown, right? Yeah. Um, we also have yeah. a bottle of whiskey. We have some fly line from Chris Johnson over at Living Waters. We we have. Some flies from Fly Geek Matt. There's 24. Well, you said there's 24, but I only found 23. I, I actually, I just needed a, a one Rio getter. I just needed one more for this one fish. Just kidding. One fell out of the box on the way. Yeah, but, one fell out of the box. Uh, <laughs> it was a very bumpy he, and he ride. Went into very, into a fish's mouth. Very my last trip. Justin, can you hold that up so we can see Matt's uh, playing card, or can you hold his playing card up to the camera? Yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, this, this piece of art is amazing. Um, this is all you need to know about Matt Bennett right here, actually. You know what I can do is I can. It go, encompasses. Can it encompasses his. Let's we'll see. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> he's he's dealing play, cards. Yeah, he's, he's dealing, dealing out cards. And lunch monies and brunch monies. It's, uh, yeah. That's sweet. That is that is definitely talent right there. Um, and that, but, that artist is Jeff Maguro. Out of, he's out of Dallas, Texas. Am I pronouncing that right? I don't know. <laughs> Matt, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to uh, fill us in on uh, on who that was. But uh, uh, yeah, he's an amazing artist. Yeah, <laughs> terrific likeness. Um, Dave says. Uh, so I don't think we were. You weren't done with the package yet. There was more, wasn't there? Well, definitely a lot yes. more. Uh, just, I mean, there's even more with Matt's giveaway. He's he's giving away one month subscription to his lunchbox, which is freaking awesome. Um, and let me get back to this collage over here so we can what, check it out. What is what is the lunchbox? What is that? It's a subscription deal that he ties flies and he'll send them to you every month, and he changes it up per month. So the, the flies are specific towards that time of year. It's like a curated fly box, basically. It's and I just, I just actually received mine the other day, and it has um, – it's uh, carp flies. So uh, it has Rio getters. It has carpet bombs. Um, it's, it's not just carp flies, but, um, it's, I mean, these flies work great for bass as well because they sink to the bottom. They're big, uh, heavy lead weight eyes. Uh, the hooks kind of – um, they're going to surface up towards the, the top while they're sitting at the bottom of the uh, riverbed. 
and they're, I mean, they're gorgeous. I mean, it's inspiration in a box. And um, yeah, so definitely if you're not already signed up, sign up for that subscription for great ideas on tying flies and, you know, his flies work. Yeah, they really do. They've been tested. Um, but they're, they're especially great at getting stuck in trees when Aaron's casting. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but not on, on top of all that, we got the book, we got the Paquito, we got the, uh, the fly box, we got a bottle of Davin's whiskey. Um, is that going to be dealer's choice or is it just a specific whiskey? It's going to be the signature whiskey, uh, that we're, that we're going to be giving away. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of our flagship whiskeys. It's the whiskey that we started off with. Um, it is a whiskey that's made from two of our different beer styles, the devil's backbone, if anybody's a real ale fan and the, uh, real heavy scotch ale. And, uh, those two uh, beers are made the way they normally would, minus the hops. Uh, they are distilled, uh, fermented, distilled, and aged separately at the end of the aging process. They're put together in a way that complement each other's flavor. And um, it's so basically, I'm making two different whiskeys, bringing them together to give you one cohesive product. And that's our signature whiskey, our again, our flagship whiskey. And Davin, you gave me a taste of this, uh, of this latest batch because it i mean you do a different blend every time you, you every release and um this latest blend you did i think is the best one you've ever done and well, I mean, thank it, you it is tasty it is it is delicious that's i mean that's that's what it means to be craft there there we're still we're still uh mingling the same uh mash bills together but um year to year uh flavors are going to start to change things are going to start to develop a little bit better we're going to get um a little more age and you know, we're in our infancy when it comes to Texas whiskey. And, um, I really, you know, eventually we'd like to get a baseline. And I think this particular, this particular batch is going to be our baseline of where we're going from here. And so, yeah, I'm very proud of it. And, um, it's, uh, it's a phenomenal whiskey. So, well, I've, I've saved the best for last in the, uh, the giveaway here. It is, from Josh over at Spoke Hollow it is a, a a guided wade trip with the one and only Davin Topol, and it's coming with a Sightline Provisions cup. And uh, so you get the book signed, you get a, a Heartwood Trade Paquito, the the awesome flies from Matt, the this one month subscription, the bottle of whiskey, a fly line, and you get to go fishing with Davin. And, um, you know, maybe I can join you guys as well. That'd be pretty sweet. Did you mention the fly line, uh, where that fly line is being donated from? Yeah. Yeah. That fly line is coming from Chris Johnson up at Living Waters. It's, uh, okay. it's like it's $120 fly line. It's really awesome. It's, I'm fortunate enough to have it on a couple of my reels. It's, it's the infinity taper of the, uh, of amplitude. And, um, it's really awesome. And like I said, that trip comes with, um, the sightline provisions cup. So, and and uh, Chris Boom. Chris is also donating the uh, cutthroat trout, I believe. Yeah, he's 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 gonna get, he's gonna he's gonna catch it and then bring it down, net it, um, put it into a special place for you right. to cast at it. <laughs> so the All right. David wanted the uh, Dave face and wanted the uh, the sound effect again. I'm not gonna do it. Um, just do it in your head or. Or maybe it'd probably be better. Just whoa, 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 whoa. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the big winner is Brian Bailey. What is up, big whoa, dog? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Brian. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> That's what your tugboat sounds like, right, Aaron? <laughs> right? I like that. When you're yeah. floating around at 42 knots. Yeah. <laughs> well, congrats. Um, thanks again for everybody watching. It was really cool. Um, I guess we'll try and do this again. We, we got it set up. It, it was a lot of fun for us. Um, thanks, Davin. I look forward to having a drink with you in a minute. Aaron, uh, we'll see you soon, buddy. I Actually, hey. I, just call, I just called the Uber, and I'm on my way down to you guys. So. All right. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, hey, I, man, thank you both so much. Uh, this was a fantastic idea, and um, I'm – I'm incredibly touched that you uh, that you did this, and 
that uh, Mark supported it and, and Edgar and um, Josh and Chris Johnson and everyone who, uh, who donated stuff for this. And um, uh, I'm really touched. And, and thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. This, is, this has been awesome. We're going to go oh, back Aaron, to the... love you. And I mean, we can't, I mean, we can't say how much uh, this book means to all of us and um, is, again, just helping us in these trying times yeah. um, and just being able to get out and um, allowing other people to learn about the, the special uh, world that we live in, which is fly fishing. So thank you again, bro. Right on. And thanks to all the viewers. Thanks to the chat. Everybody's saying thank you. Great job. We we appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Um, next time we're going to be at a brewery somewhere and we're going to still have that big party. What do you say? I'm down. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to transition, uh, transition back to the, the screen and we'll have a little tune uh, from Trent with the, the title card. So we'll see you all. Have a good night. Stay safe. And uh, we'll, maybe we'll see you on the streams. <laughs>